Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime, here at my next Avatar discussion topic. Uh, this week's topic is going to be the history of the Fire Nation. The reason I'm doing this topic is because uh, Smoke and Shadow Part 2 was released yesterday and it revealed some pretty early Fire Nation history. Though it doesn't really make much of an effort to give you much details on when exactly it takes place. So for anyone who's read that book and perhaps confused about how this ties in with the other early Fire Nation history that we know, this that's what this video is aiming to do, to kind of tie it all together into, as of now, everything we know, including Smoke and Shadow Part 2, what is the history of the Fire Nation, how do events play out, and so on. So uh, yeah, just be aware that this video will contain spoilers for Smoke and Shadow Part 2. Uh, the spoilers do come from the history section of that book as opposed to the kind of current day plot so um, just be aware of that and the other thing here is that I'll say at the very start is that by no means am I trying to say that this is 100% what it is I did a bunch of research yesterday some today and in my mind this is the best way it fits together I'm going to say it a, a bunch of times throughout this video but that I kind of I probably could have made this video about two or three different ways depending on which way I went in regards to if this event is set before this event so just be aware that even I'm not 100% confident that all of this ties together in the exact way that I'm going to say in this video. So uh, let's uh, get started. The uh, earliest Fire Nation history we get as far as I'm aware is from beginnings. Um, so I'm, t I'm saying straight away that Smoke and Shadow Part 2, the stuff that happens there, takes place after um, the whole spear portals with Wan and stuff like that beginnings. So that means that the earliest history of the Fire Nation we know is that the Fire Islands, which they were called initially, um, were just places in the spirit wilds. Uh, as far er as early back as we know, they were just the spirits inhabited them. Uh, during the time when all humans lived on the backs of lion turtles. And so, based on what we know right now, the earliest kind of fire nation bender people we know are Wan and the other people like Jaya and stuff like that who lived on that lion turtle. They are the earliest known fire benders as well as earliest known potential people of the fire nation. Things get a little bit tricky because apparently Juan excluded all of the rest of them are kind of wiped out during that spirit conflict uh, in Beginnings Part 2. Um, but Vatu could have been lying, but either way, that that's what we know. I'll also say right now that um, the history of the Fire Nation versus the history of Fire Benders is kind of different. So just be aware of that also. So um, yeah, so Juan, uh, as far as we're aware, is the first proper human firebender to you know take the element as a po uh, and it not just be like a temporary gift from the lion turtle he takes it and becomes the first proper firebender he then later learns from a dragon the true way of firebending so he's also the first um person to have that kind of ancient sun warrior kind of philosophy on things as well uh, Jaya, inspired by Wan, then leaves the Lion Turtle with the rest of the people, and they become the kind of nomadic firebenders that we see at that point in time in Beginnings. And it's pretty clear at this point, uh, in Beginnings, in between like uh, the start of Wan's story and Wan becoming the Avatar, that any humans that are walking around the spirit wilds are nomadic. They don't have a specific place that they're living right now um, Jaya and his crew kind of make a temporary residence but they kind of obviously get wiped out at that point um, but it's clear that nowhere is really set so there's no set nations at this point in time which is why I'm saying that um, the whole um, warlord stuff that we get in Spoken Shadow Part 2 has to take place after um, the portals and Wan becoming the Avatar but um, yeah, as far as we were there, wiped out. Juan remains the only person from this Fire Lion Turtle to uh, survive. And uh, what, like the other thing we know is that there are way more than four Lion Turtles. There's not just one for each element. We don't know for sure that there was a separate Fire Lion Turtle, but I, I think there kind of has to be at some point. And then there's obviously the the we can make the assumption that Jaya's group that we meet, who is then wiped out potentially wasn't everyone who left the Lion Turtle originally and there could be other firebenders elsewhere and then 
as the generations progress, that's how firebending lives on and doesn't just kind of, I suppose, die out with one and then only come back with the next avatar. Um, so that 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 basically ends it until, like, obviously, uh, harmonic convergence happens. Wan seals Vatu away and then makes the decision to seal the spirit portals away. And this is the probably key event in terms of placing any early history of the world. In that Wan seals the portals and basically gets rid of all spirits from the world. It's not a like completely one hundred percent set rule. In that. We know that like there's spirits like Wan Shi Tong who can basically travel in between the worlds without even using the spirit portals. There are powerful spirits who can do that. They don't even need like Hei Bai could do it as well. They can do that sort of transfer themselves. So it's not a like st- steadfast rule, which I'll bring up later on with the Kamurakage. But the key event here is obviously that the spirits inhabiting the spirit wilds basically stops any sort of major conflicts about over territory in the human world between humans themselves from happening so the whole warlord situation, the fight over the fire island can't take place before the spirit portals are sealed because otherwise where are the spirits? How could a human conflict happen without the spirits getting involved in it? And the spirits aren't mentioned in Spoken Shadow Part 2 so that's why I'm pretty confident that that has to take place afterwards. So um, there's there's some other stuff that happens as well, but I'll get into that. As far as I'm aware, what happens next in the timeline is that once the spirits leave, at some point in between uh, one becoming the Avatar and his death, um, the events of Smoke and Shadow Part 2 play out, the history that we get there, which is, and I'll read this from Smoke and Shadow Part 2, is that uh, long... Long ago, long before the Fire Nation came into existence, warlords ruled the Fire Islands. They fought one another for territory and often common people were caught in the middle. All the warlords were cruel and ruthless, but worst of them all was a brute named Toz, T-O-Z. Feast or famine, Toz demanded annual tributes from all villages in the territory. One year, a village dared to refuse Toz his tribute, and so to teach them a lesson, Toz had all of the village's children kidnapped. The children were never seen again, and the mo- and the village's mothers died in sadness. Um, soon after the mother's deaths, uh, dark spirits began to haunt Toz and his men. Every so often, they would drift into the warlord's encampment in the middle of the night. The next morning, a child would be gone. Out of fear, Toz's men abandoned him, his regime collapsed. And uh, the Kamurakage continued to haunt them, uh, to haunt the Fire Island, until the first Fire Lord appeared and basically united all of the Fire Islands together into the Fire Nation. So that's the creation event of the Fire Fire Nation because of the first Fire Lord, and then the Kamurakage stopped haunting the world. Now, this is the one kind of thing that potentially, you know, means that it could be set before the spirit portals are closed but as I said before we know for a fact that spirits are in the world during Ang's time um, which means that it's not just a steadfast rule that humans can't enter the spirit world after the spirit portals are closed there are spirits there we know uh, humans can become spirits <coughs> and stuff like that so um, I'm very confident that um, this is kind of the way things have to play out so um it's this point, so like we, we finally got to the actual start of the Fire Nation here, um, with the first Fire Lord. And um th- th- this is where it, things get a bit interesting because obviously at this at this point in time we have the Fire Nation. The I the Fire Islands are now the Fire Nation. We have a Fire Lord specifically mentioned. Um and this is where we can start to bring in some of the other kind of big players in the Fire Nation history as well as um other things, but uh, I'll, I'll make a brief comment about fire bending here. Um, the images in Smoke and Shadow Part Two of the history don't show anyone fire bending at all. Uh, we see Toes and the warlords use swords and stuff like that. We only see the first fire lord briefly in the images, and he doesn't seem to fire bend. Though it doesn't exclude the fact that he could be a firebender. How else could he unite the nations so quickly? Perhaps he is a firebender. That would probably make sense that he is a, the, a firebender. But again, that's not that's not confirmed by any means. So, given that at this point in time it seems like okay, the first Fire Lord's potentially one of the only Firebenders in the Fire Nation. How does Firebending then become prevalent there? This is where you have to bring in the fact that 
when the line turtles left, the line turtles left the stop protecting humans after Wong closed the spirit portals because they weren't needed anymore. And when this happened, um, basically what Jaya and his crew did, which is they got uh, bending permanently themselves, that happened with basically all of them. So that's where basically bending of all of the nations becomes like a, a thing that humans have and they can genetically pass on. So that's when that event happens. So either some remnants of uh, Jaya's group who survived or another potential fire line turtle live on and eventually find their way to the fire islands and um, firebending becomes a pretty prevalent thing. Uh, I'll mention the ancient sun warriors here because they're one of the more ancient uh, kind of early kind of mention of firebenders in Fire Nation history. Most of the fire sages are also stated to be firebenders as well. So um, these two groups must appear at some point in this time. But I'll address the sun warriors towards the end of the video kind of separately. Because I don't think they really tie in necessarily to the overall like history of the kind of root leadership of the Fire Nation. So um, this is where I will mention the history of the fire sages. Um, now, the first thing I'm going to mention here is the information that we have from the Lost Scrolls uh, book, Fire. Now, this is a book that is kind of canon. I think most people consider it canon, but it's probably one of the most shaky canon-wise. But it does give us some early history on the fire sages. I'll read it out here. The history of the sages goes back thousands of years. A council of sages led the Fire Nation in its early years. The lead sage was was known as the Fire Lord because of his high level of firebending ability and his deep spiritual connection to fire. Throughout the years, the Fire Lord severed ties with the sages and took over control of the Fire Nation for himself. So, I, uh, I think tying this in with the history we have now about the first Fire Lord... I don't think he was a sage. I, I, I think that's pretty clear to say. I don't think he was one of the fire sages. But he was the first one. He created the fire nation. And then I think at some point. The fire sages then became prevalent. In fire nation society. Because of their spirituality. Fire bending skills. And became. And took on a leadership role within the fire nation. The fire lord eventually becoming. A kind of part of that group then becoming part of the leadership in that the lead sage was the fire lord and then as time progressed once again it shifted back into the fire lords more being kind of spiritual advisors the these the fire sages being more spiritual advisors to the fire lord who was a separate just ruler figure not directly related to the sages now the sages have a history that I don't think a lot of people know about and this relates to beginnings uh, part one and some of part two as well the actual Korra section of those episodes she washes up on this island in the fire nation and fire sages as well as a shaman healer um, basically activate the vision of Wan for her now where she ends up is an island is a place called uh, Banti Village, B H A N T I Village, and these people are descendants of the uh, Banti tribe. At least the shaman healer is. And now, where we get this name Banti Village from is um, Mike uh, Mike DiMartino, co-creator of Avatar, has a blog. Uh, I think it's just called Mike DiMartino Blog. Uh, I'll link it in the description. One of his posts there uh, actually has a link to the official premise uh, in the writers meetings and stuff like that for Beginnings Part 1 and this mentions that the Shaman Healer is part of the Bonte tribe and it gives a little bit of backstory on the Bonte tribe uh, mentioning that uh, they have their origins uh, to an island, obviously this Bonte village island um, in the Fire Nation and their origins date back to or in or around the time of the first Avatar so this is, you can see sort of where this is all tying together, they're a deeply spiritual people and ancestors of this tribe eventually become the various spiritual advisors, sages of all of the nations, so they actually some of them leave the Fire Nation and become the spiritual advisors for all of the nations including the fire nation itself so that's a, a really interesting connection this bonti tribe because again in the in bonti village they lower Korra into basically a big pool of spirit water so there's kind of like a volcanic spirit water pool that is i suppose the counterpart to the one we see in the water tribe so that's an interesting connection there and so it's it, it's kind of you can sort of see where it's connecting together now that at some point during the time of Wan. People did the the people of the Fire Nation that sort of philosophy 
uh, began to kind of settle down on those fire islands, including this Bonte tribe, who were very spiritual. Some of them left and created spiritual kind of um, people in the other tribes. And over time, the the ones that stayed on the Fire Nation became so kind of prevalent and important in society that they then became part of the leadership with the lead sage being the Fire Lord. So that's um, pretty interesting. And then, like uh, we can assume over time, uh, it says here in the in the uh, Lost Scrolls book, uh, um, throughout the years, the Fire Lord severed ties with the sages and took over control of the na- Fire Nation for himself. Now, this is because the um, Fire Sages then began to um, put more of their time into kind of being loyal to the Avatar and kind of being more about the Avatar, hence why there's like... Um, a lot of statues in the kind of fire sage temple of the uh, fire sages temples of the avatars and then obviously we know uh, that sozin kind of changes that so he makes he demands that the sages pledge loyalty to the fire lord as opposed to the avatar and then with uh, with shayu in kind of uh, Shayu still remains loyal to the Avatar, and now in Smoke and Shadow, he's back in charge of the Sages. He's now called Great Sage Shayu, and again, he's loyal to the Avatar as well. And from that point on, the Fire Lord becomes a role much more similar to the modern day one that we know of, with obviously the exceptions being Sozin, Azulon, and um, Ozai, who seem a lot more similar to the Warlords of old, as opposed to, say, uh, Zuko, who seems much more like the original Fire Lord who wants peace and stuff like that. So there's not a nice connection between the early Fire Lords and the um, ones of uh, later. So um, yeah, so there's that. Now, you may be asking the question, um, where does the Ancient Sun Warriors come into this? You know, because our we're what were they? Were, Were they ever in charge of the Fire Nation, like really important? Or were they just a civilization to themselves? I think we are led to believe with the ancient Sun Warriors that they basically that their that island that the temple is on is is their island. We we know for a fact they're a secretive people, um, and that eventually over time they they became small. We don't know what led to their kind of the the society collapse to the point where they're so small. It could have been the start of people hunting the dragons, but something before then probably happened. I think, in part, it's just that they were always a fairly small um, kind of group of people just living on that island, kept to themselves, and over time their society just kind of fell and became a kind of smaller thing. It's clear that this is the case because not not that many people in the Fire Nation know the ancient Sun Warrior way of firebending uh, based on the whole dancing dragon technique, the the dragon fire kind of uh, style not many people know that that's that's clear like uh iro and zuko ang they're kind of special because they know it Wan as well and um, so it's, it's interesting that connection there that the avatar was the first kind of one of the, the avatar were, the avatar was the first proper firebender the avatar was also the first dancing dragon human user to learn from the dragons and um then obviously the ancient sun warriors kind of take up this practice and this is where we get those other early mentions of history with the fact that humans first learned to um uh, firebend from the dragons and the first people were the ancient sun warriors that's stated in the firebending masters and that's true because you know wh- when would wands really early days in the spirit wilds be kind of told in history apart from the avatar spirit so it, it kind of makes sense that that's seen as the history of this whole technique that it's the civilization that's based around it that becomes the early history so you know you understand like that they're kind of going for more realistic history here in that you know realistically who would know about Juan learning from the dragons like who would have uh, kind of wrote that down in history Um. So, you know, where exactly the origins of the ancient Sun Warriors, um, you know, perhaps it's remnants of Jaya's people, perhaps it's um, related to the Bonti tribe, but again, we don't really know the specifics, we just know that the ancient Sun Warriors have existed for uh, thousands of years, and um, yeah, you know, they they, they could date back to in or around the time of the Warlords, where they're on, I think, one of the more northern islands, so they could have been involved in this conflict, um, 
though without firebending though again firebending coming to, into things is a, an important uh thing to mention as well so um you know there's a lot of stuff that needs to come together here but um d- definitely like there's a connection the ancient sun warriors um the firebenders from the line turtles and then the other key firebenders being the fire sages so and um, there are kind of a couple of groups of people that ha- kind of have to come together here but in general I-, I i do think it works it just it very much seems like a thing where the fire nation and then firebending coming to the fire nation is kind of almost a separate thing and the stories aren't like completely intertwined and that some of that really early fire nation history doesn't seem to involve firebending all that much apart from the whole Wan Jaya line turtle bit um so yeah the, the going back to the first fire lord they do mention that he ushered in a uh a, an era of prolonged peace now i'm thinking that this peace was shattered because of another event in the life of Wan, which is obviously we know that Wan died during a war between humans, specifically the um, these firebenders, uh, earthbenders, and waterbenders. We see that in the kind of uh, kind of montage towards the end of Beginnings Part Two, that Wan dies in the middle of this war. He couldn't bring peace to humans, despite um, helping with the spirits. Um, and this is an interesting thing because we don't know a lot of information about this war at all. So I th- I'm, I really do think that it, it somehow relates to the fact that um, obviously the first Fire Lord has to come after the sealing of the Spear Portals and then he ushers in an era of prolonged peace um, and that obviously changes because the Fire Nation at some point does go to war against the other nations and I think it's clear that they lose just because the Earth Kingdom does then have control of the main landmass of the world. And we know that one of the battlefields from this war, Zuko walks through in Zuko alone, which is in the Earth Kingdom. And you see like um, one of those Earth discs, which is basically the the scene where Wan dies. So there's that. So it's clear that the Fire Nation and the Water Tribes lost this war and obviously retreated back to their islands effectively. You know, the, the North and South Pole and the Fire Islands, the Fire Nation. Um, how exactly this war came about, what it was really over we're not fully sure but um they're clearly hinting that um you know he ushered in an era of prolonged peace but something happened after that to stop the peace um and uh yeah that's uh that is about it you know again i I think it, it, it all links together there's a lot of complex stuff going on here there's a lot of mention of um in history like uh the little bits that we have of these people thousands of years ago whereas like it's not an exact number the only real exact number for history we have is that the events of Wan's time take place like 10,000 years before before the present day when Korra hears about that event so um you know it, it all it all seems to fit together um the main thing is just that, like, if you look at Avatar Wiki for some of this, again, like, this is where you need to really think about your lore and not just take everything the wiki says to heart. And that one of the articles on the Ancient Sun Warriors seems to, in the wiki, says that the Ancient Sun Warriors are an Asian civilization that, like, predate the Fire Nation by thousands of years, which is absolutely incorrect now um, and doesn't make any sense. So, yeah, that's it. Now... In terms of you know, uh, am I could I be wrong about any of this? Um, definitely, absolutely. Like if you, if you guys uh, uh, know any information that I may have missed, you think I've kind of tied all of this together wrongly? Absolutely, tell me in the uh, uh, comments below. I want to learn more about this. I want to have the timeline correct on this. But if you think I'm correct, definitely let me know and let me know what your thoughts were on this t- type of lore video. If there is anything else lore-wise that I can do, I'll definitely try and do some sort of a video on it. But um, yeah, the, the the key points I think in terms of uh, ty- putting any early event in the Avatar universe into line are definitely the sealing of the spirit portals because that marks a shift in the world that is huge and like impossible to miss in anything that if there are spirits around if humans are still living on line turtles it's before um Wong closes the spirit portals 
um, if it's afterwards there aren't spirits around apart from maybe a couple here or there but humans are mainly in control of the world and that that's the ultimate key way to kind of determine things um, as well so there's that now there is the potential that the stuff with the warlords and the stuff from Stroke and Shadow potentially takes place pre spirit wilds but that we don't even know how long the spirit wilds have been in place how long humans have lived on the back of line turtles as it been like a thing for thousands of years in itself i doubt that very much that that that's the case just because firebending does come into fire nation history fairly early on uh, and firebending only comes into play properly in or around the time of beginnings as we see in those episodes so uh, yeah, that's been the video. Uh, as I said in the comments, let me know what your thoughts were on this one. Uh, I really liked doing the research on this one, putting it all together. But uh, definitely let me know your thoughts on this uh, below. Uh, but thanks for this. Thanks for watching this video, and bye.